on up, beautiful people. Hello, 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 followers, subscribers, and fans. Thanks again for joining me as I hang with the almost mythical party twins. ¿Y este qué le pasa? Alvaro, this is not your thing. Or our guests. Of course, of course, go ahead. So, this week we've been tasked to spend time with our classmates and get to know each other a little bit better. But the thing is, we're supposed to slip Miss Liza Truths into the conversation and see if the others can pick up on it. For each lie we catch, we get a point. We also get a point if the other person, or in your guys' case, the even better looking set of twins in person, misses your lie. The man can flatter, this should be interesting. So, tell me a little bit more about yourselves. Uh, talk about this book on duality you've got going. How's that? It's coming along exceptionally well. And you two believe in this stuff? We live this stuff. Hello, twins? I mean, we're duality in its truest form. You know, I have a twin. That's a lie. It's more of a half truth. She's more of a soul sister. We've been besties since we were born. I'll allow half of it. I definitely call BS on you two doing everything together. We do do everything together. Even shower? Oh. What? Ew, no. Exactly. Oh, now you want to take things literally. Our, Our turn. turn. So, you do a million things. How do you possibly have time to do this, study, and run a new site? It's called a planner. Learn it, love it, buy it. That's how I keep organized in daily schedules. I feel like I'm always tired and I never have time for anything. No, that's called a hangover, sweetie. Hey, 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 we've all been there. I'm honestly amazed at how you two are able to party so much but still keep up with your social media like it's a business. I mean, talk about juggling duality. It's like you two are superheroes living double lives. Only our capes, our Instagram filters. <laughs> but we're gonna keep going because it seems you're pretty tied up right now. Half a point to half a point. So remember to like, subscribe, and stay, stay beautiful. beautiful. Stay beautiful. All right. Guys, we should totally collab more often. Yeah, me. Friends and neighbors, welcome back. Joining me in my humble abode today, we have Dan Roland. This is my room. You have to say hi, Dan. It's what normal humans do. Hi. Dan is our resident ethicist, AKA he's a big nerd who loves to talk about what makes people good or bad when he talks at all. So tell me, Dan, what makes you interested in a field where you'll probably never get paid? Well, our ability to uh, differentiate between good and evil is part of what makes us a thinking species. We're social creatures. Knowing how to treat each other well has helped us evolve for centuries. It's called reciprocal altruism. Are there like other animals that know good and evil? Uh, some animals understand fair versus unfair. They've actually been doing experiments where they take a group of animals and they have them complete a certain task and half of them get a reward while the others don't. Mm -hmm. uh, monkeys, rats, crows, and ravens, they all reacted poorly to perceived inequality. Those animals would love Naya. Oh, they should get on a group text together and they can be part of a revolution. Take action. Some animals can be deliberately cruel too, right? Like bottlenose dolphins murder each other for fun. Being smart and social can sometimes make animals unethical. I mean, I, yes, I guess. Is you that could not say. true? Oh no, because I, mean, I, mean, I read about it in a clickbait that, article before, and I just, just like, okay, think of... let's try this again. I'm Harper. You're Dan. We've probably been asked to do this assignment together because, mm, well, we're pretty much opposite. Pretty much. I think your interests are fundamentally malignant. I don't understand your impulse to lie. And I think the fetishization of falsehood is going to have a negative impact on the future of our society. Has that one been eating at you for a while? Yeah. Did you get it all off your chest? Yes. I'll grab you some water. See, that's why I don't like the whole conscious on steroids aspect of moral philosophy. There's just a lot of anxiety there. Well, aren't you worried, though? About what? Well, if you're never truly honest to those around you, how would you ever have real friends? <laughs> oh, no, my friends, they know I'm always going to be lying to them. So they can just trust that I'm always going to be lying to them. It's a true north kind of thing. That sounds like moral relativism. That sounds like a very dull conversation. So, you have opinions on me. Fair enough. But I'm more interested in the opinions you have on the others. What, what do you mean? I mean, what's your take on this, Aristotle? Besides me, does anyone else stand out as suspicious? No, this isn't part of the assignment. DNZ, you snoop on everybody's social media pages. 
I'm not discussing this. I have a team of girls bound by WhatsApp texts helping me do background checks. We could be a team. I'm not gonna help you get an A in this class by gossiping on everyone. Wow, you're no fun at all. I know. That's not a compliment. Okay, what if I gave you some information on Bella and Ben? This won't be an exchange of information and you owe me nothing. No, that, that would still be cheating. And I'm pretty sure I'd owe you a little bit more than just nothing. All right, you're surprisingly smart. Thank you. Now let's see if you can spot other lies. Other lies? What, to what? Ah, to admit? We have to do our homework now, Danny boy. Our assignment for this week is spy the lie. Dan and I will each tell each other something about ourselves. Then we'll sneak in lies into the conversation. Whoever can sneak more lies past each other will get a point. For the record, I, I really don't want to do this assignment. I know, Danny boy. Which is why this makes this such an easy win. You want to go first, get it over with? Yeah. Something you might not know about me is I'm, I'm really good at cooking. Uh, I, I learned where to get good, cheap ingredients and how to cook from our, um, from the cooks in, in our dorm kitchenettes. And um, I'm particularly good at making spaghetti carbonara and I got all the cooking equipment at the campus yard sale this semester, and I just, I'm, I'm great, and I use it all the time. What? Was it really good? Oh, Dan, no. Right. You have a tell. Really, what is it? Your whole face! How did you manage to not be able to lie about cooking? I've never seen somebody full body twitch before. I, I don't want... You should probably get that checked out. It's fine, I'm fine. I wanted to win, but I didn't want to lie, and both can't be true at the same time. R.I.P. Spaghetti Carbonara. Okay, my turn. When I was five years old, I had an imaginary friend called Mr. Ponscum Pepperdine. He was tall and he wore a suit made out of mud and weeds and he existed mostly to scare my little sister Joanna. So one day I decided to scare her by setting up a kick drum in my closet behind my clothes and I attached a piece of plywood to the pedal so that way I could play the drum without it being visible. And so when my sister walked in, I was talking to Mr. Ponscum Pepperdine and I pressed the plywood so that he could respond and she freaked. She never snooped in my room again. I... That was the lie, right? Please tell me that was the lie. What part was the lie? Everything, all of it. The only lie was the name of my sister. She's Maddie. That's right, you said that in your last video. Yep. I figured if you were shocked by the rest of the information, one little lie might slip by you. Wait, so you only told one lie? I knew it'd be enough to beat you. You're kind of scary. I know. That wasn't a compliment. And now for hacking lessons. Tip number two. What's that? It, it's a segment I do. Tip number two. You can't cheat an honest man or woman. Joseph, the yellow kid wow, was one of history's best known con artists. He coined the phrase, you can't cheat an honest man. Con artists, according to wow, offer people something for nothing. If the person has a wobbly moral center though, they'll be eager for that kind of bargain and end up getting nothing for something. So that offer you made me earlier. Was a con. If you would have taken that information, which would have been bad intel, I would have gone on to tell the twins the nasty things you said about them. But that, that wouldn't have stopped me from trying to get an A in the class. But it would have slowed you down. Turns out you're honest. This isn't even a gold star. To all you lovers, catch me next time, <laughs> if you can. What's up, guys? I'm Naya. And I am Erica. And Artist, and alien, and, and athlete. Today, we decide what is truth and what is fiction. And what is reality? And what is just a mere simulation? Join us, children, on this glorious journey. All right then. Basically, we are going to be playing a fun little game of interview BS. Love that game. Childhood fave. Speaking of childhood, tell me a little bit about your parents. Picture this. 
rolling pastures as far as the eye can see. Cozy family, small houses, suburban bliss. Mom calls you in for dinner Mommy. while the night sky is painted with the orange, pinks, and purples of a beautiful sunset. Then, tragedy strikes. At 10, a well burst, and my father is in a horrific accident. B.S. Girl, didn't I meet your dad at orientation? Maybe that was just my stepdad. Locking in the BS. Stepdads don't usually look exactly like their stepdaughters, now do they? Well, you didn't catch all my lies, so that's still three points me, one point Naya. Mm. Fine. Mm. Ask me something then. If you could be a color, what color would you be? Erica. I already know it's purple. Okay, what is your guilty pleasure? I don't believe in guilty pleasures. BS. I wasn't finished. I don't really believe in guilty pleasures, which is true, by the way, so point me. But I guess I understand where you're coming from. I guess my guilty pleasure is long baths, taking half an hour to fully moisturize my body while reading trashy celebrity gossip magazines. I still hold on to the fact that we shouldn't feel guilty for doing something that we want. Preach! I have never felt guilty for a single moment in my entire life. I just live my art. And if I evoke guilt or rage or passion or desire, then that's the entire point. point, point, point. If you could change one thing about yourself, what would it be? Easy. I would be five feet taller so no one could ever ignore me. <laughs> I think that is the most truthful thing you've ever said. Well, then that is one point me. I couldn't be five feet taller. What would I do? Cars, buses, doors. However, I would take an extra foot or two or three. Well, two points for me for my guilty pleasure answer. I knew if I riled you up, you would ignore everything else. Okay, well then answer me this. If you could make people feel one thing, what would it be? Empathy. You? Shock. Seems pretty legit. No lies detected. Hmm. How do you like this class? Honestly, I'm really grateful for this opportunity. I'm learning a lot. And at first I was a little hesitant about Professor M, but I've come around to his teaching style. The class is super interesting and always keeps me on my toes. BS. There's no way you like Professor M. Sure, you're grateful to have a platform, but the rest is BS. Lies, lies, lies from the truth crusader, Naya Santos herself. All right, I tried. Bonus question. Did you start that fire? Wow. Right to the point. Mm -hmm. Yes, I did start the fire. I started the fire because fire is cleansing. I was preparing for a performance piece on different cleansing rituals. I was burning some sage. It got a little out of hand, and you know the rest of the story. B.S. I guess we'll never know. <laughs> well, that about wraps this up. In case you guys were keeping track, uh, I won. No, I won. I am the queen of lime. Well, I guess I'll just give you that title. Until next time, later, Covenants. Hello, all you loyal cat followers. Cat would just like to thank you for stop. your support during this very hard transition from radio Seriously, voice stop. to full-time <laughs> vlogger. Uh, and also just a quick reminder to you know, please like and subscribe. We're done. We got it. We're good. Well, sorry, I'm just excited that you chose me for this collaboration project. I think we both know I didn't choose you. The professor assigned us as partners. Okay, and we all know you get special preference. I mean, you are the campus master of crime, after all. I'm surprised you're not wearing a trench coat like some L.A. noir detective. Not all detectives wear badges. Can we please get to the homework? Well, of becoming the average couple and lying to each other and hoping the other doesn't notice. First of all, I barely know you, so we might be a couple of people, but we certainly are not a couple. Although, I'm sure if you really need your codependency needs met, there are plenty of perky girls on campus who are more than willing. Yeah, you'd be surprised. At what, the love lemmings following you around? More saddened than surprised. Well, I don't want a lemming. It, who wants a lemming when you could have a kitten? People who are afraid of getting scratched up? Well, I'm not as afraid of getting scratched up as you might think. Good to know. Can we please get to the homework? Oh, yeah, such a brain. So for today's task, we'll be having a normal conversation and using our lie detecting skills to figure out if the other person is lying or telling the truth. So I'll go first. Okay. Why do you think the police have you as a suspect for the fire? What, is that your idea of normal conversation? 
Wait, are you taking a seminar on small talk as well as lying this semester? Small talk is boring. Monday through Tuesday, it's people bragging about their weekends, and Wednesday through Friday, it's people making plans for the weekends, and Saturdays, everyone's just looking for a hookup. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, sometimes I wish I could get people to talk twice as fast, like you do on the podcast, or, I don't know, just like fast forward to the meat of a conversation. I don't care if our older brothers were friends of friends of friends. Like, just tell me something that, or anything that matters. Like what? I don't know, the, the best story you ever heard that, that you're not in, or the first meal you remember, something you wish everyone knew, something you're afraid of. All right, what are you afraid of? Just the game, or just to know? Just to know. Of not being enough? What would make you ever think that? I mean, freshman girls practically have shrines dedicated to you in their communal bathrooms. Okay, sure, that's nice, but that's just them building up the idea of me. Right, like they've turned me into some fantasy, and I can't really keep up to that. It's not easy being this charming all the time. <laughs> Anyways, I don't know, I find that the more people know me, the less they like me. I guess an idea is always easier to love than an actual person. I guess. So, what are you scared of? Still not playing the game. Just wondering about you. Okay, this is gonna sound dumb. Doubtful. You know how in physics class we learned that we're all made up of atoms? So, in a very real way, our bodies are governed by quantum mechanics, just like the stars in the sky. Okay, not really sure why this is scary, I'm but... getting to it. One of the scariest moments for me was when Professor Vickery was explaining this, and I can't really understand the science, but basically she explained that we never actually touch anything. I mean, yeah, our brains make us think we are by reacting to the electromagnetic fields around them, but the two atoms never actually touch. Meaning that we can never really touch anything, not even each other. Yeah, that is scary. It terrifies me, like how alone we actually are. We spend our whole lives trying to connect with people, but at the end of the day, we really only have ourselves. Is that why you've pretty much given up on having friends? I have friends. Well, you have a, a co-host and a roommate, but I've never really seen you hanging out with friends. Okay, fair point. <sighs> hey, who am I to judge? I'm pretty much the poster kid for feeling alone in a crowd. I don't know, I just want you to be happy. Why do you care? Well, if you can't ever really touch anyone, then the least you can do for someone you care about is try to make them happy. Well, it would make me extremely happy if we could finish the homework. Okay, homework done. You win. You spotted all my bro douchebaggery lies. What? What, you win. Why? Well, because I don't want to lie to you even if it is just a game.